Writing programs with loops or with iteration is such a common task when programming that there are many different kinds of loops in just about every programming language. The most fundamental kind is the while loop, which we've already looked at in a previous video. Well, there's a certain pattern of the while loop that is so common that Python and many other programming languages have adopted a certain special kind of syntax for uh, making it a little bit shorter and more pleasant to work with. Now, because this is a, a specific case, I should mention that not everything you can do with a while loop, you can do with what we'll see is called a for in loop or a for each loop. Uh, this is going to offer some a slightly more constrained form of looping. And the benefit that we get is that we write slightly more terse and less prone to infinite loops uh, code. So let's take a look at the for in loop. But before we do so, let's review what we know about the certain pattern of a while loop that uh, we're going to be able to write with much less code. So when we're iterating, remember we're trying to make some progress through some problem and we're going to loop. And each time we loop, we should be bringing ourselves closer and closer to the end goal. This is what iteration is all about. So with a while loop, we have this pattern of, let's imagine our index i is say an integer. And i is going to keep track of where we currently are. And so by convention, we start from zero, especially if we're trying to move through every item of a list, we're gonna start from index zero and work our way up. And then we'll have some conditions. So like, let's imagine, okay, let's imagine we have a list as well. So um, I'm just gonna call my list x's and it will be a list of integers as well. And let's just say it's you know, 10, 20, 30. Okay, so we've got i and it's zero, which corresponds to the very first index, right? Why we start i from zero is because the first index of our list is zero. And that means when we go and access x's of index i, we're talking about the first list. And then as we iterate, we're gonna move through our list one by one. So we're gonna say while, i is less than the length of x's. Okay. And we know that when we start from zero and we use less than and some number, this loop is going to iterate n number of times, carrying out what's inside the body of the loop and continue on. Well, let's just say we wanted to print out each item in this list. Well, one of the things that we could do is we could take a single item and store it in a variable. And I'm going to uh, name this variable you know, item as just uh, one way of doing this. So we could name this variable item and item is an integer that is, uh, let's say, x's of index i, right? Meaning the current index we're working on in this iteration, take that item value. So when it, the index is zero, that's the item value 10 would be stored in item. And then we might print this item out. Now, if we were to run this code, what would be the problem with it? Well, we would have an infinite loop because nothing inside of this while loop is changing to bring us closer to the terminating condition, which I at some point needs to become equal or greater to the length of X's, but nothing about I is changing inside of this loop. So we need to be sure to increment I by one or by however much we wanted to. But typically, if we want to move through every item in a list, we'll increment it by one. And so this is a general pattern that we have available to us for iterating through all of the items of a list using a while loop in i as our index. Now, let's talk about a for in or a for each loop, right? Uh, and uh, first, let's take a look at an example. All right. So our example is going to be, I mean, I'm just gonna split this, you know, this board right down the middle and assume that we have this list X's. If we wanted to move through each of the items in this list and we didn't care about their index, we didn't need to do anything more special. We just wanted to rewrite this first while loop as a for in loop. What we can do is we can ask for each item in X's and loop on that item. So what do I mean by that? Well, uh, let's start out here. 
We're going to have a for keyword. And then we're going to use what we want to name a variable for a given item that we're working with in what it is that we're iterating through. So I'm going to say for item, that will be the name in and X's, right? And then what we're going to do is print the item. So let's take a look and try and understand uh, this syntax because this little for loop does the exact same thing in essence as this more elaborate while loop. So this is sort of the benefit of this trade-off for this particular pattern. When we have some code that matches it well, we can uh, have a much shorter implementation. But how does this actually match up? Because it seems like there's some magic going on here. If it's doing all of this, but with so many fewer you know, tokens and, and pieces of code, that means that there must be some conventions that are being applied here. So let's think about those conventions. So the first is uh, the, the, the built-in keywords. So notice that while is a keyword that we use uh, in a while loop that's built into the Python language. Well, for and in are also our built-in keywords, right? So these two keywords are not things that we can use uh, in any other way uh, or for variable names or for function names. You know, Python reserves for and in for its own purposes. And, and those are special words in the Python language. And this is one of the use cases of these words, okay? Next is, well, what is it that we're actually moving through? What is our collection? Well, X's is the, you know, the, 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 the collection that we're moving through. In this case, it's a sequence or a list. And we'll learn that we can actually do this with anything that's a sequence. And in, we'll learn that there are other things that we can use for n with as well. But anything that's a sequence, meaning what we just talked about with ranges uh, and with the characters of a string even, we can write a for in to move through each item in that given uh, list. Well, this, this information was kind of spread out um, in uh, what was the, the while loop, right? So X's, we used X's as the length. So we, we bounded our, our loop around this in a very similar way, right? So here we're saying for every item or for each item in the list X's, here we're saying, you know, while I is less than the length of X's. So same, same kind of concept. And then here we're accessing X's at a specific index I. This is the part that feels a little bit magical. What is this item? Where is that coming from? What does that mean? And could we use different words there? Well, let's first talk about the similarity here. And let me choose pink for the highlighting color here. What item is doing in the for in is exactly what's actually happening on this line right here. What item in the for in is saying, or whatever we name this variable, notice this is just the name of a variable, just like we named a variable item here, we could have named this x. So x is an integer that's assigned x's at index i. Here we could have named for x in x's, and that would have been fine too. So what we're effectively doing is saying, the name that I want you to associate with each item as we iterate through each item is item, or we could have used x's or, or whatever we want. If we had a list of strings named words, we might say for word in words or for each word in words. Uh, and this is what's going to cause item to be updated uh, to the next value in the list, just like we had in the while loop, but we're not having to write these explicit indexing operations quite the same way ourselves. Uh, and of course we can kind of translate, okay, well, what's inside the body of loop, the actual contents, the things that we're trying to carry out these two things are, you know, exactly the same. But we didn't have to keep track of i from an index of zero. We didn't have to remember to update our index. And this is why these loops can help us avoid accidentally writing infinite loops. Notice that if you write a for in and you use, you know, a sequence such as x's here, which is a list, or we could use a range or a string or other kinds of sequences too, um, it's just going to move through each item in the order that that sequence is specified one by one, such that each time this loop runs, you know, item will be the I at index zero, whatever stored at that index. We go into this loop, item will 
print and we go back up to the top and we go to the next item, right? And so one of the reasons why we have this particular syntax is because this is such a common operation to do. Now, there are scenarios where you actually want the index and you don't want the actual value stored there. How can we write loops that use say a variable like i to move through indices and do some, something that's a little bit more similar to what we're doing here? You couldn't implement, for example, a sorting algorithm like the one that we've like the ones we've seen uh, using a for in in this way. You would need to be a little bit more particular about how you index. Sometimes you want to be able to access the index of your input list. So let's take a look at an example where we're using a range of values and uh, see how we might be able to access things uh, index by index. So what if we wanted to write a function or, or write a loop uh, that uh, looped through all of the indices uh, but skipped values in, skipped every other value in our list? So what if we wanted to print out every other value in our list using a for in? Well, in this previous example, we wouldn't have been able to do that, right? You know, maybe if we introduced a new variable and kept track of, you know, if that variable was even or odd and we counted it up, you know, we could do that. But the for in is going to move through each item one by one in our input list, right? Well, we can do this with other types of sequences such as a range, right? So how might we express a range? So let's imagine we've got a, a list and let's say words, oops, let me go back to my pen. Uh, words is a list of strings that is, you know, let's say hello and actually let's do something very short here. A, B, C, oops, D. All right, so we've got four uh, strings here. What if we wanted to print out, you know, A and C? This would be indices 0, 1, 2, 3. So we only really want to print out indices 0 and 2. Well, can we come up with a range that has those indices in it? So maybe um, we have a range such as even range. And this would be of type range. And how would we initialize this range? Well, we could have a range whose start is zero, whose stop is the length of words, and whose step is two, right? So we previously looked at, and I'll link to uh, the range video if you're coming back to this video sometime later, uh, range, and it's a special kind of sequence. Right, that allows us to specify ranges of integers, starting from zero, not including four. So you know the, the stopping value of our range is four and we wouldn't include that. And we're gonna go up by two each time. So we can also use four in loops to uh, iterate through the values of a range. So I might say for i in even range. What we would do is we would say print words at index i. And so what's interesting, and if we were to just go back to highlight some of this, so we've got our, our built-in keywords. And uh, remember that the name that we're giving to whatever value we're iterating through here is i. So we're using that in a slightly different way. We're using this as an index. But what we're iterating through is every item in this range. So zero, two, and if this were a longer list of, of words, so if we had like say A through Z, zero, two, four, six, eight, uh, because we set the step up by two. And so when you need to write a loop that involves indexing and say have an I or other indexing variables, um, frequently in Python, you'll use ranges as what it is that you're writing the for in loop to work with. So let's actually try writing uh, a couple of these in VS Code to get a feel for them uh, with, a, with some examples. So I'm gonna encourage you to start a new file, a blank empty file that will allow us to give some examples of working with for in loops. So 
let's first talk through the initial example um, and, and maybe add some documentation. Um, iterate through each item in a list. Okay, so uh, here, let's say our list is um, words and it's a list of strings. Say A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. All right. If we wanna print out each of these strings, one after the other after the other, we could write a for in loop and so for and typically you want to name the item that you're working with something that's meaningful to your program so if we have a list of words it's not uncommon to just give the singular here so our list is going to be the plural there's many words in this list in in this case you know, actually let's name this letters right uh to just to give this a, a a more meaningful example and so for letter in letters now i should note that it's completely arbitrary we could have named this s we could have named this x what we choose at this position you know, is just the name of a variable that exists inside of this for loop. And we can now, you know, print letter, right? So what this is going to do is uh, print each letter in the letters list one by one, All right? So let's try this out. Python M, and then I put this in my lessons directory, ls15, 024 n and what do you know we see uh a b c d e f if i were to scroll up just a little bit and try this one more time so there we go a through g all printed out one by one and that feels quite a bit simpler than working through each item using a, a, a while loop however you'll notice there's a limitation here what if you wanted to print every other letter well, again, it, we could do some stuff to get kind of hacky and add some additional variables and things like that. But if you're trying to use a for in loop with indices, we tend to use ranges for that purpose. So let's do an example uh, like we have for that. So let's say for um, I in, and let's actually make a comment here, print every other letter in letters list. Okay. So for I in, and then our range. Now in the previous example where I was writing this out, I set up a variable that stored a range and that's where we constructed it. It's more conventional in Python to actually just construct your range and use the range function as part of your for in statement. So for range in uh, starting from index zero, and then we're going to stop at the length of letters, and then uh, we're gonna have a step of two. What are we gonna do? Well, uh, if I wanted to, I could directly print letters of index i, right? And um, let me print, let's, let's make, let's add a print statement here um, that lets us know where we're at in our program. So print every other letter, right? And print each letter is what I might add as a sort of a heading to our output here, okay? So notice that the reason we're able to write a for in loop for a list and a range goes back to this idea that we can iterate through each item in a sequence. You can actually do this with each letter in a string. You can for in each character in a string. Um, and all of these things we could do with while loops. In fact, we can do even more things with while loops than uh, we could here. Um, but for many, many cases, for I would say 80 to 90% of the loops that you're going to need to write, uh, you can typically write it as either for each item in some list as you process every single item, or uh, a for in loop where you're using a range in a very specific way. And I'll show you one more way after we, we try this out. So let's try this out and convince ourselves that this uh, actually works. So every other letter, A, C, E, G, right? If we had started our range from index one, that would mean starting from you know, the B item or the second value in our list, the, the value with index one, and we would see B, D, F, right? And we wouldn't include G. All right. I mentioned that there's three different ways of setting up a range. 
If you don't include this very last option, then your default step would be one. We would move you know, one after the other after the other, zero, one, two, three. And if we include only one value in constructing a range, that's our stop, and we start from zero. So um, let's just add one more note here to, to bring this full circle and uh, use a range to iterate through each index in a, uh, in a, in a sequence. Iterate through each index in a sequence. And the convention here is for i in range and length of letters. So that's pretty tidy, right? So we've got a range, its default starting value will be zero. This is going to be its stopping value. And remember, we're not including that. And the reason for that is this use case right here, right? This is it. When you're moving through a sequence, the last index you want is one less than the length or the number of items in your sequence. So that's why range behaves in this way with being exclusive at its stopping point. And we're gonna move up by one each time. So if we were to print, you know, uh, we could print i. Uh, actually, let's print an f string here. So let's print an f string where i is the, uh, the i placeholder. And then we could also print uh, letters of index i. or I, uh, index i of letters is uh, letters index i, right? And a closing parenthesis because we're printing here. Great. So I'm gonna try and run this example. And notice, you know, i starts zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and letters index i, is A through G. So this is us iterating through each index in that range. The key takeaway in this video is that we have a new kind of loop syntax at our disposal. And one of these three options is probably how you would wind up using it. You might use it when you want to move through every item in your list and you don't care about the indices, right? Or if you do care about indices and you wanna move through them with a specific pattern, you can use a very nuanced application of range. So we could move through a range that's like one half of our list or parts of our list or every other item. But if you're working with indices and you wanna just move from the start to the back and, and touch every index or, or visit every index along the way, uh, this is a common pattern that you'll see in, in Python programs. This syntax exists because there are so many use cases that it applies to, and it's nice to have some syntax to avoid infinite loops and all of that. However, I wanna reemphasize that there are many algorithms that are not very naturally expressed using these for end loops. The while loop is a much more powerful loop, but with that power comes additional responsibility and expectations of maintaining you know, your state and being sure that you're not running into infinite loop scenarios and all of those kinds of things. So there are trade-offs in either way that you go. And I would encourage you to become familiar with while loops first and foremost um, before you start concerning yourselves with for in loops. And then once you're comfortable with how while loops work, for in can help you, you know, avoid some unexpected errors and write code that's a little bit more terse um, while still understanding what's actually happening behind the scenes uh, to a, a pretty good approximation. Great work on the four in loops, and I hope you find these useful in the programs ahead.